Hi, this is Bernard from English OTP and I'm coming today with another video on Crooked Letter, Crooked Letter and we're going to have a look at two very central themes and topics, otherness and prejudice. So let's jump right in. When we talk about otherness, of course, we need to understand what otherness means. And uh, otherness is a concept. There is something called the concept of the other. Uh, this is something that's really well known in psychology. It's something that is used a lot as well in uh, narratology, in uh, literary studies. So, and that's something that plays a really big role in Crooked Letter, Crooked Letter. I just want to quickly outline it, the concept of the other. Sigmund Bauman says that um, identities are set up as dichotomies. So it might be hard to understand, but a dichotomy is something where there is A and also B. So if we, for example, for a long time, when we talked about gender, we talked about a gender dichotomy. So there was male and there was female and there was nothing else. And male was also male because it wasn't female. Okay. I'm going to give you an example now so you can hopefully understand it, what I mean. So humans identify others along the lines of differences rather than similarities. That's what some, that's usually what something happens. That's usually what happens all the time, right? We don't know it. Maybe we don't understand that we do it that way, but we do do it that way. So my example is someone will identify themselves as white only because others are black. Example of a cat. In a world where all cats are white, the cat's going to perceive itself as the cat. But if you see another cat that is different from you, for example, a black cat, you will realize that you are not only a cat, but that you're a white cat. Okay, so without the black cat, you're a cat. If there is a black cat, then you're a white cat. Okay, so again, you will only identify yourself as, for example, a person who's white or a person who is black or a person who is green if there are other people of a different color. That works with everything, works with hair, works with body form, works with gender, right? So again, identities are set up as dichotomies. In Gran Torino, it's Gran Torino, sorry about that. Um, in Crooked Letter, Crooked Letter, um, we have, well, we have two big forms of otherness. There's a lot of them in there, but I want to focus on these two. Racism as otherness. So perceiving yourself along the lines of so-called race. And then othering the other people. So I'm white, you're black. And which is really important for Silas, obviously, um, for the political minority, we could say, blacks. Um, and on the other hand, otherness also in geekiness. And that's really important for Larry, right? Because Larry is a hick that nobody likes. So this strange guy who's different. He brings books to school. He brings reptiles to school. He talks different. He maybe looks slightly different. He's not sporty. He's not cool. He's just a geek. He's just a nerd. And um, so he's not normal. Everything that is not normal is perceived as other. And so, and all of these are reasons for social prejudgment. So you can be socially prejudged because of race. And this, this happens in Crooked Letter very often. But you can also be socially prejudged because you are different. You are not normal. You're a nerd, you're a geek. And this is what Larry is. So they identify, the kids identify Larry as the other because he does things they don't do. For example, read books, bring them to school. Sort of move and talk in a strange way. And the symbol in Crooked Letter, Crooked Letter for this is the symbol of the monster. And there's this quote, please go back to that one. Um, it's in the scene where Larry is shot. Uh, it says, Larry felt a strange forgiveness for him, so the person who shoots him, because all monsters were misunderstood. 
that's what he says. So he feels the forgiveness for the person who shoots him because he knows that there is more behind that mask than you can see from the outside. And of course, that's the story of Larry's life. Um, people prejudge him, misunderstand him, see the monster that he is supposed to be, but he, they don't know that he's misunderstood, maybe. They don't know that he's innocent. They don't know that he has these normal feelings and that he's this loving person. And this is the symbol of the monster mask. And it's very interesting how the monster mask sort of goes through the whole narrative. It goes through the beginning of the narrative when Larry buys it and when he's invited to the horror house because of it, how the other children think it's cool. And it goes right to the end of the narrative after um, Wallace has stolen the mask, has used the mask and Larry gets the mask back and he decides to throw it away and the mask is removed, right? This mask of the monster, this sort of outside, you know, the thing that you see, this otherness that you can see. Um, in the end, it comes back to Larry and he decides to throw it away. And this is, of course, the removal of the otherness. And this, you know, the otherness and the monstrosity of Larry is removed at the end as well because he's cleared. So he's no longer this monster that people see and this monster that people prejudge in the same way as they did before. Okay, so this is a really short overview of otherness and prejudice. Um, it works a lot in the novel. Uh, think of those two main things, racism and geekiness. Think of misunderstood monsters. Think of Larry, but also think of Wallace. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Maybe there's another character that you can think of um, who is some sort of monster or some sort of other. Um, maybe you have questions about the monster mask or maybe you see it differently. Maybe you think uh, it's a symbol for something else. Um, I think it's really important to hold on to that monster, monster mask. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. I um, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave us a like if you like and uh, all the best to you guys.